Hello, everyone. Welcome to the D Hard House podcast. My name is Alicia. I am your host of this crafty podcast. I am coming to you from Tacoma, Washington in the United States. That's right. The Pacific Northwest, the beautiful, glorious Pacific Northwest. Have I rubbed it in enough? Okay, moving on. (laughs) I am usually joined by my four-legged co-host, Marjorie, our Black Labrador. That is her doggy bed right back there. She's not with us today in the craft room. She is enjoying looking out one of our big windows in this house. So (laughs) she would much rather watch the birds fly around in the snow than join us. And I can't blame her. So uh, you can follow me on other social media other than right here on YouTube with this podcast. You can follow me on Instagram. My personal account is Read Knit Run. Over there I post all the things that I'm knitting from other designers or myself, uh, as well as pictures from adventures that I go on uh, here in the Pacific Northwest or um, pictures of my dog, things like that. Uh, You can also follow me on Ravelry. It's not called following on Ravelry. You can be my friend on Ravelry. My account is Alinny Knits 2. I do try to keep up with my project pages and notes to go along with my projects, so feel free to peruse all of that. And I would love to peruse all of your projects too, because I love seeing what everyone is working on. You can follow the podcast on Instagram (laughs) on the D Hard House account. Over there, I will post about the podcast. I will post about designs that I'm working on, yarn that I'm dyeing, etc. You can also join the D Hard House podcast group on Ravelry. Uh, And it is called the D Hard House podcast group and it's hosted on Ravelry. And over there I host knit-alongs, make-alongs, crochet-alongs, and also post show notes about these videos. And I will link uh, to my project pages, I will link to designers, I will link to videos that I talk about, and things like that. So, I believe that covers all of the methods of contact other than right here on YouTube. So folks, it has been an interesting week. It has been an interesting few weeks in the new year here, okay? Let me get you up to speed. (laughs) So I did post the 2019 year in review episode where I went over uh, some numbers of things that I've knit over the past calendar year. Uh, I think I even put in some pictures as well. Uh, So if you're curious about how much I knit in the year of 2019, go check out that video. This is going to be like a regular episode. I'm going to get back in the groove of regular podcasting, which is going to be amazing because I have really missed you guys. You don't even know how much I've missed you guys. (laughs) So uh, let me just say, first off, All right, for the Christmas holiday, we went to my mother-in-law's house down in Northern California, and it was wonderful. It was so awesome. (laughs) Uh, She did such a good job hosting. Uh, We ate good food. Excuse me. (laughs) We had good company. Uh, We went on adventures. It was awesome. And then... My dog was an idiot. Yeah. So my mother-in-law has a dog. We have a dog. And the dogs get along. Unless there is a bone to fight over. Yeah. So uh, I went to go give Marjorie a treat. And I was going to give her a treat. And then I was going to give Darby his own treat. But... (laughs) I got the treat out of the bag and Darby was like, that one's mine. And Marjorie was like, no, Marjorie's my dog, by the way. So they started arguing. And by arguing, I mean growling in a way that sounded like they wanted to kill each other. Those of you who have dogs 
know what I'm talking about. Like, it is a different growl than the usual, hey, get off my tail, right? It's, <laughs> it's like, I want to kill you, kind of. It was terrifying. And they're both doing it. They're both just like, no, it's mine. So they're biting at each other, like dogs do. They're fine, by the way. They drew no blood except mine, okay? Now, my blood was drawn because I was an idiot. <laughs> so let me just point that out. I was an idiot. So Marjorie is bigger, so she's taller than Darby. And so when they're going at it, she's got like the upper hold on the other dog. So I reach my hand into her mouth to try to pull her off. That was not a good move. Okay, so those of you who, um, this is your warning, I'm going to show you my injury. Okay, this is like three weeks later, so it's not that bad. All right, it's scabbed over. It's okay. Uh, but I know some of you um, may not want to see that, so I'll just ask that you look away for about a minute. Um, and so I'm just going to show you uh, my finger. So uh, I do have this rather large looking cut on my finger, and it is scabbed over. Okay, there is no bleeding. It's fine. I can bend my finger. It doesn't hurt. Okay, I can extend it all the way out. I can tap on things. Okay, <laughs> now, that's not how it was at first. And in fact, at first I was terrified. So right now it just looks like a nasty cut because that's, that's really all it is. Although I think it was somewhat deep of a cut because I've kind of lost a little bit of my feeling in this fingertip. Now, I can feel that I'm pushing on it because I can feel like the pressure distributing across my finger, but it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't feel the sensitive, like, my nail is touching my finger versus my skin is touching my finger. That all just feels the same to me. All right, so I can feel the pressure of that I'm touching something, but I can't feel what I'm touching if that makes sense, which is a bummer. I'm right-handed. This is my right hand. I use this finger to write, to knit, to do all the things. So what I've been having to do is adapt. And I've had to adapt because um, this wound was much more sensitive at first, and I couldn't really bend my finger without it hurting a lot. Um, I couldn't touch the tip of my finger without it hurting a lot. Um, so it's come a long way. It's healing up. But um, I've been having to adapt so that I can still do my job. I'm a teacher. I teach math. I write on a whiteboard a lot. And I'm right-handed. And that's where my injury is. So I haven't been able to write like this, where I'm using this finger to hold the marker, I've been having to hold it like this and hold this finger up in a way. <laughs> yeah, because we started class like two weeks ago and two weeks ago, this was not feeling that great. So um, it's come a long way. It's getting better. But like I said, first, my dog was an idiot. And in response, I was an idiot. <laughs> And the dogs are fine, okay? That was my first question. Uh, I saw a bunch of blood. I freaked out and thought it was one of the dogs. And so here I am like trying to find where the bleeding is coming from and I can't figure it out because I'm holding down on Marjorie and there's still blood dripping and I'm like, what is going on? And then I realize it's me that's bleeding. So the dogs were absolutely fine. Thank God. Okay. It was just me. So that was a really fun uh, emergency room visit. Not. 
Uh, yeah, so I don't have any stitches. Uh, they said they wouldn't stitch it up because it was an animal bite wound type thing. And um, they didn't want to... They said they don't stitch up wounds like that that come from an animal bite or an animal tooth, right? She didn't bite me. I stuck my hand in there, right? Just clarifying. <laughs> I was the idiot. <laughs> um, because they said... it. it it would inevitably get infected. And then the stitches holding all of that in would just make it worse. So uh, so there are no stitches, but it, it's healing. I can tell that it's healing. It's gonna be fine. I don't know how long it's gonna take. It is annoying as all get out. But at least I still have my fingertip, <laughs> right? I mean, that was dumb. So I shared this story with uh, my colleagues because I, I went in and I had, um, I was wearing a uh, sleeve over this finger. You can buy like a, a finger sleeve type bandage. It's like a, like a cotton material that just slides over your finger. Um, so I was wearing that just so I could cover up this scab so it didn't look nasty and it didn't freak anyone out. So I had that covering it. And so, uh, yeah, one of my colleagues was asking me, you know, what happened? And so I told him the dog story and he was like, hey, do you know how to fight up or how to fight up, <laughs> how to break up a fight between dogs where there's a large dog involved? And I said, obviously not in a good way. I, I know how to separate them while hurting myself. So <laughs> he tells me, all you have to do is grab her back legs. And I'm like, what? He goes, yeah. Her mouth is up here, right, involved in the fighting. And so you're way back here at her back legs, so you're nowhere near her mouth. And all you do is you pick up her two back legs, and she'll lose balance, and she'll let go. Some of you are probably like, yeah, I knew that already. Good for you. I didn't. <laughs> and now I know. But I wanted to share that with you because, yeah, my mistake. Uh, but I learned a new trick. I haven't tried it yet. But I'm looking forward to the day that I can. <laughs> Whatever. Gosh, that was so ridiculous. Ugh, so it cut our vacation short. It cut the whole vacation short because we were given a family member a ride to the airport. So, ugh. It was annoying, but I'm so thankful. Everyone was so supportive and so nice. And it just was as pleasant as it could have possibly been for being in a lot of pain. So whatever. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, so that's the deal with my finger. So if you see some kind of dark mark as I wave my hand around, that's what it is. I'm sorry. So that was eventful and made um, prepping for the start of class really annoying because I had to then type on the keyboard without using this finger. And then I want to copy that on the other hand. So then I'm like this, whatever, it was weird. So class has been going, okay, everything's great. It's winter, there's snow which means classes have been getting canceled. <sighs> which is, yay, no school, yay, I get a day off. And also at the same time, why are we missing class three days in a row? Like this morning, I think we would have been fine to have class. But they went ahead and sent out the email last night. It said, you know what? Two hour delay, morning classes are canceled. Yeah. So Monday, we had a two hour delay. Tuesday, oh, Monday we had a two hour delay and then they canceled evening classes. So our late morning and afternoon classes were still on. Tuesday, they just closed campus all day. Today, there was a delayed start. And my husband just drove into campus. 
And he said it's super snowy, like whiteout conditions snowy. So he's worried they're going to cancel class again tonight. And he drove all the way there, perhaps for nothing. <laughs> yeah. So, like I said, it's, it's this double-edged sword because as an employee, I'm like, yay, I get a day off. And at the, but as a teacher, I'm like, hey, class time is precious and I can't lose any more of that. So weather, cooperate. <laughs> That's my spiel. So I have been being creative with um, using technology to help me stay in touch with my students, recording videos. I'm pretty comfy with recording videos. I think you guys know that about me. <laughs> you can't do this and not feel comfortable about it. So anyway, so I've been staying in touch with them, but it is, it's been really difficult. So I'm actually really hoping we have school tomorrow because I can't take this anymore. It's, it's so much more work to put a video together than it is to just go in and talk to people in person. So <laughs> please give me a regular day tomorrow. Um, no, it's, it's been okay. It's been interesting. Uh, I've learned a lot about some of the new technology that I got to play with. So that was cool. But, uh, yeah, I, I kind of miss my students and I want to see them. So that's my spiel. That is what has been going on. It's been very interesting. So, uh, now what I want to tell you guys is, um, <laughs> First of all, today is Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, January 15th. So my uh, husband is teaching Monday and Wednesday evenings, which means that's a perfect time for me to record a podcast. So I'm going to make Wednesday evening my regular podcast uh, recording time. And so I'm hoping to get back into the once a week podcast routine, which will be exciting because then I can pump out uh, shorter episodes. This one might be a little bit longer because I'm being rambly and catching you guys up. But as we move forward, I'm hoping the once a week podcast will be shorter uh, to make the videos more manageable because I know I have a hard time carving out time to sit down and watch an hour and a half long podcast. I have to watch it in pieces and it's it's fine, but it's just not the same as sitting down and watching a 30 minute video. So that's my goal. That's something I'm striving toward. And then on Monday nights, I would love to do, excuse me, maybe not every Monday night because um, quite a few Mondays I will have to stay late at work for meetings, but there are some Mondays I would love to do a live stream. And I'm thinking I would like to do that live stream over on Instagram on the D Hard House account. So... Um, I'm going to be posting something on Instagram asking you guys about times, um, like what times would work for you for the live stream. Um, and like I said, I'd like to do it on Instagram just because I can use my phone <laughs> and <laughs> that'll be way more portable. I'm laughing because I'm looking at my, my setup here for the podcast. It's ridiculous. Uh, so I don't want to have to carry my laptop around with me and the webcam and the microphone and all these these three pieces. Uh, I'd love to just have my phone. So that's why I'm thinking Instagram instead of YouTube. So uh, yeah, I'll be putting a post up on Instagram over on the D Hard House account asking you guys about days and times uh, that you could chime in and we'll have a nice live stream and I think that'll be really cool. So, um, I don't know if we'll do it this Monday. This m upcoming Monday is Martin Luther King Jr. Day here in the States. Uh, so there's no school because <laughs> that's what we need is another no school day. <laughs> uh, but that was a planned one. So, uh, this Monday there will be no school. So Michael will be off of work. I don't know if we have something planned that weekend. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe a live stream that time. Huh? Maybe not, because you guys probably have plans as well um, to celebrate the long weekend. I don't know. That's why I'm going to throw out some questions over on Instagram for you. <laughs> so watch for that. Okay. 
Uh, so other announcements. I know it's long. I'm sorry. But there's a lot of stuff I got to catch you guys up on because it's been eventful. You guys, I got invited to participate in a knit along, which is really exciting. So this knit along I'm going to share with you now is called the 12 Gift Knit Socks Knit Along. And it's a year long. So for the year of 2020, sock knit along. And it's focused on gift knitting. I'm reading the little prompt right here on my phone right now. So what I will do is link this information down below. I will link it here in uh, the description box on YouTube. I will also link it in the show notes I post on Ravelry. So it's the 12 gift knit socks knit along. The idea is to spread out your holiday knitting throughout the year instead of trying to cram it all in in the last few months. So <laughs> with that thought of, oh my God, I was so stressed out, fresh in your mind, um, this person who's hosting this knit along ran with that. So I believe it is Hot Pink Socks who is hosting this. At least Hot Pink Socks is the one who reached out to me. So um, the idea is to knit one pair of socks each month for someone that you intend to gift um, during the holidays. So the idea is to knit one pair of socks each month. Now, I plan on participating as a participant, but I'm also participating as one of the fe featured designers, which is really exciting. So each month there will be a featured designer. So if you knit a sock pattern by that featured designer in that month, you'll get double entries for the prizes. Um, so what that means is that you can really knit any sock design that you want and still gain entry into this, which I love when people have that option because buying patterns can add up after a while. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but I definitely have a limited budget for my hobby. So I really appreciate when people include options on ways to participate. So, uh, so you do not have to purchase a pattern from the featured designer. Um, it's encouraged, but it's not required. So you can knit any sock pattern you want. Uh, but if you use the featured designer pattern, uh, you get uh, double entries, which is really nice. So this month, the featured designer is Steris, Sarah Stevens. Excuse me. My mouth is getting dry. Uh, Sarah Stevens for the month of January. So I know this is coming to you guys a bit late. It's like halfway through the month. I recognize that. I apologize. Um, so... Um, yeah, Sarah Stevens is the featured designer. Um, I just clicked on the link for um, her designs to go check them out. Looks like we've got socks, definitely, for the sock knit along. Looks like we've got some cowls. Ooh, is that a sweater? Hmm, nice. But this is a sock knit along. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so really good stuff. Oh, I like that one. So uh, like I said, I've linked this below so you can go check this out. So I will be a featured designer in August. Oh, I'm so excited. That'll be really cool. So um, yes, I look forward to that. So I hope that you guys can join in this knit along. Like I said, I know I've given you kind of late notice because we're halfway through the month. I super apologize for that. But um, if you already have a pair of socks on the needles, particularly a pair of socks you plan on gifting, <laughs> um, then just finish those up this month and then, you know, you're, you're good to go on participating. So, yes, I apologize for that. That's, um, that's my bad. But, yes, oh my gosh, people are already posting progress pictures. Oh, these are pretty. Okay, I'm going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look at this later when I'm not podcasting. So yes, all that information is linked down below so you guys can click over. You can join in the fun, read more about it, and all the super cool things. So that finishes up the announcements. Yay! 
spooky. So let me move into the knitting content. So first, let me share with you guys um, this shawl that I'm wearing. My lighting is going. It is um, three in the afternoon. It's like pitch black at 5 p.m. So I'm losing my lighting. I'm so sorry. And it's cloudy. It's always cloudy. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I'm going to have to get used to. Uh, but yes, I'm wearing a shawl that I knit. Was it last year or the year before? It might have been the year before. Doesn't matter. It's just a plain boomerang shawl. And I knit this out of woolen boon yarn in the Ambrosia Salad colorway. And it's got like this um, light green tint to it like it's speckled you can see that it's um it's a speckled yarn it's got all kinds of different colors in it uh blue peach green there's a little speck of red right there but overall it has kind of this light green tint to it uh so there's a very green theme going on today so i thought i would wear a green shawl to go with it <laughs> it's kind of funny what's happening so that's what I'm wearing and now I'm going to share with you the things that I have successfully finished since I saw you last time. So I have finished two pairs of socks. One of those socks is a design, the other one's just a plain old self-striping sock uh, that's a gift. So these two pairs of socks were so close to being finished. Like I totally could have finished them in 2019 and counted them in my 2019 total in my 2019 year in review episode. Guess what? Didn't happen. Guess why? Because Alicia's an idiot. So <laughs> while my finger was totally out of commission, my hands hurt, I couldn't knit a stitch to save my life. Uh, these socks rested on the needles and trickled into 2020. So these are my first two uh, finished objects for the year. So the first pair of socks is a design. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, the lighting is horrible. I apologize. I will work on that since I do plan on recording in the evenings. Um, for now, I hope you can bear with me, but I will definitely work on my lighting setup. I promise. <laughs> uh, yeah, so these are socks, uh, that I've designed. I have sent the pattern out to my testers, by the way. Thank you so much for volunteering your time. I really appreciate it. Um, so they are going to be working on, um, these socks as well. So these are Colorworks socks knit with two contrasting colors. I used, um, for the main color, Cloudborn Merino, uh, sock yarn. So it's got, uh, it's a Merino nylon blend. Excuse me. And that's what I get for drinking soda. Uh, the color is... I think it's Gray Heather. Shayla Heather. It's Shayla Heather. Yep, Shayla Heather. And then the contrasting color is purple. I don't know if you can tell that it is purple. Oh, there we go. There's the color. Uh, so the contrasting color is purple. And that is Cascade Heritage in the plum color. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love these socks. So... Uh, I did decide on a name for the design, the name for these socks. Um, the name is Scholarly Socks. Uh, so they just make me think of being in a library, studying for exams. I'm a teacher. That is my thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so these are the Scholarly Socks. They have... Um, twisted rib at the top. So twisted one by one rib. You've got color work all the way down. You have um, a heel flap and gusset. The gusset section here does include uh, an extra chart so you can adapt the color work to continue through the gusset and look seamless, <laughs> which is nice. Uh, and then a um, standard toe. So they are knit uh, cuff down. 
that is my preferred method. I really struggle with toe up, something I want to work on. Uh, but yes, yeah, so these are finished. Um, I did finish these this month after my, um, <laughs> my finger still hurt, but I was like, dude, I need to finish these socks. <laughs> I am going to find a way to knit a stitch. Uh, and I did. So yes, these are finished and I'm super excited. I can't wait to get this pattern out to you. I'm hoping to get it posted in mid February. So I want to give my testers enough time to, uh, go through the pattern, ask questions, uh, and then also to give me a chance to, um, make any edits to the pattern after they've, they've looked through it. So mid February, you can look forward to the scholarly socks. So those are finished. And then I also finished a pair of socks for my husband, by the way, scholarly socks, they're for me. Uh, so these are a pair of self-striping socks that I knit for my husband. The yarn is Premier Yarns Serenity Sock in the gray flannel colorway. And unfortunately, uh, I don't know if this yarn is still being produced. I'm pretty sure it's not being carried by Joann's anymore, but I don't know if it's still being produced. That's where I bought it. Uh, yeah, so these are also cuff down, heel flap and gusset. I've been really enjoying knitting a heel flap and gusset lately. So, yep, there's a couple of those. I just did a one by one rib for the entire leg of the sock uh, and then continued it down the top of the foot. I find uh, that the socks tend to not last longer, but but last longer. <laughs> so what I mean by that is as I'm wearing hand knit socks, they kind of stretch out a little bit. And so it's nice if there's ribbing in more than one place. So like on these socks, there's ribbing only at the top. So wearing them throughout the day, they're going to want to fall down. Okay. Possibly. We'll see how color work behaves. But on these, right, so with the ribbing all the way here, it helps keep that sock kind of um, hugging the foot. So my husband said he had a little bit of trouble with his socks falling down. So I thought, well, I'll just put more ribbing in there. That'll solve that problem, <laughs> hopefully. Anyway, so uh, I did knit these socks. Um, I knit one of them from the ball and then I put the remaining yarn on the ball winder so I could reverse the order of the stripes uh, to knit the second sock. So I don't know if you can tell but the stripes do go sort of in the opposite order. So I've seen other folks uh, do that with their self-striping socks and I think that's pretty ingenious to um, address the idea of the socks match, but they don't match. So I think that's pretty neat. Uh, anyway, yep, so those are finished. So two pairs of socks, done. Could have been done last year, but it didn't happen. Okay, so works in progress. I cast on some things. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just love it. Okay, and I just realized I left something downstairs. That's all right. So I cast on, first of all, a sweater. I love sweaters. I just, I didn't think I would like making sweaters, but I do. I really do. They're so awesome. So I cast on, let me go find this tag for this. I know I set it down somewhere in this craft room. I think it's under those papers. I'll be right back. Okay, so I cast on this beauty. So here is the yarn. If I bring it up close, it might get the color right. It is totally coming across as like teal. It is not teal. All right, it is like a nice warm green which you can't tell. But anyway, it's a nice warm green. It's tweed yarn. 
So this is a Queensland Correct. Let's try that again. Queensland Collection Rustic Tweed. There we go. And this is, uh, first of all, it's worsted weight yarn. This is 100 grams. This is less because I'm using the ball, but 100 gram skeins. Uh, it's made in Peru for KFI. I will have to look that up. I don't know what that means. Uh, it is 65% wool, 25% alpaca, 7% acrylic, and 3% viscose. All right. Because you guys all knit with a 65, 25, 7, 3, right? Oh, yeah, totally. All right. So, I bought four skeins of this yarn from my local yarn shop when I was living in Texas. And that local yarn shop unfortunately went out of business. And so they had a huge sale, you know, get rid of everything. So I got these four skeins for dirt cheap. <laughs> dirt cheap. And I made sure to get enough for a sweater. So I got four skeins. Uh, this is the second skein that I'm on right here. So I've successfully knit up one full skein. I'm on the second one right now. So I cast on the Weekender sweater by Andrea Mowry. And I'll put in a picture up here uh, from her um, cover picture for the pattern. So the Weekender sweater is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. And you guys, there's like... 6,000 finished, maybe not finished, 6,000 projects that are tagged to the Weekender sweater. So I went looking through, not all 6,000, but I went through looking, looking through quite a few pages to see um, what people decided to knit for the size and the color choices and, and all that good stuff. Uh, so thank you to everyone who writes notes on their project page. It's, I know I find it super helpful and it's something I need to be better about. So I really appreciate when, when other people do that. So, um, I was going to knit this in a different color yarn, but I didn't have enough yardage. So I went for this green and you know what? It's going to work out just fine. <laughs> so yeah, I cast it on you guys and it's, uh, it's knit bottom up. So let me just find where I am in the mess here. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's knit bottom up. It does have, it's hard to do with just me. Um, there it is. It has a split hem, which I'm trying to show you over here. There it is. So um, you first have to deal with that split hem at the beginning. And it has this, um, it's way over here. Let me just move this. <laughs> okay. So it has this uh, slip stitch detail that runs up uh, the front of the sweater and there's also one on the back of the sweater, which is really neat. Like, oh, it's what makes this sweater. It's, it's one of the things that just makes this sweater. So you've got all of this reverse stockinette stitch and then bam, this slip stitch detail up the middle. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> so um, when you're working on this sweater, which is really nice, um, you work it inside out so that you're not having to purl all of these stitches. Uh, so <laughs> that's why I'm having a moment here with these slip stitches because on the other side, you can't really see this. It just blends in. So to see it the right side out <laughs> uh, is really gratifying. So yeah. Um, and Andrea in the pattern recommends knitting this so it has 10 inches of positive ease and that's what I'm going for because I love how it looks on her and on a lot of the people who gave it 
10 inches of positive ease. So that's what I'm going for. And we'll see what it looks like. Uh, I did do a little gauge swatch, which I um, ripped out so I could use the yarn. Because <laughs> I'm a little worried about yardage. Um, and my gauge was almost there. So I'm off by one stitch um, for stitches. And I'm off by, I think, three rows. Which the three rows is a little concerning, but uh, the one stitch, not a big deal. So, yeah, I'm excited. So I've been powering through that. Um, I feel like I'm saying you guys a lot, so sorry. Uh, yeah, I only have a few more inches to go, and then I get to separate for the sleeves. Which... When I hold it up and look at it, it does not look long enough. But when I lay it down to measure, it's it's only a few inches off from where um, the pattern tells me to stop. So I may add some length. I may not. I don't know. It's so tough to make that decision in a bottom-up sweater. Because if it was top-down, I would just keep trying it on until it reaches the length I want. But uh, not the case with a bottom-up sweater. So... I'm a little concerned. Uh, I do want the sweater to be long enough to wear to work, and I do lift my arms up quite a lot to write on the whiteboard, so I will have to make a judgment call when I get there, and I'll let you guys know what I decide. But yes, so I've got this gorgeous sweater on the needles. And, um, oh yes, I am using the recommended needle size, so uh, the pattern recommends a U.S. size 9 for the main pattern and then different sizes for the ribbing. But uh, I did my little mini gauge swatch with a U.S. size 9. And that's what I'm going with. So I'm just following the pattern and we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm just thrilled so far. And then... Um, <laughs> I'm addicted to color work. Can I just say that? All right. I, I mentioned in my 2019 year in review video that it's, I have a goal to knit a color work sweater. No, I did not start a color work sweater. <laughs> uh, I did start another pair of color work socks. Yep. So I successfully finished the scholarly socks and I have started the um, well, I haven't named these yet. Uh, another pair of Colorwork socks. So these are going to be for my husband because I can't be greedy with all the beautiful things. Like he deserves to have some really pretty socks too. So, so these are for him and I made sure to keep it kind of manly, right? So it's got this, um, plaid type of pattern. Excuse the sound of my needles on my keyboard. Uh, and it's in black and green. So see the green theme going? Yeah, I got lots of green stuff on the needles, which is hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if I get my camera to focus... So yeah, I am working on the foot of the sock again top down. So I have a uh, twisted rib up at the top, which you can't really see because it's in black yarn. And this time I did decide to work a short row heel because I just, I didn't know what to do for a gusset. So for those of you who, uh, who may not know, um, a gusset comes from added stitches so um, there would have been a bunch of extra stitches in here which in the color work pattern would mean there'd be a bunch of extra stitches in here and not necessarily enough for a full repeat of the chart so I just decided to insert a short row heel <laughs> so that I wouldn't have to uh, figure out that problem. So in a lot of the um, color work 
pictures I've been looking at. I'm just going to get a sock blocker for this. Um, what a lot of the patterns have is uh, like stripes on the gusset, which looks really cool. Uh, but I felt like a section of stripes right here, and they'd be going this way would just look awkward in this pattern, like it didn't belong. So I decided not to do that and just do a short row heel. And seeing it on here, I'm definitely agreeing with that decision. I think it looks spot on, super professional, like Michael can wear these to work and he's gonna look classy. And people are going to ask him, where did you get those socks? And he's going to tell them, my wife knit them, and it's going to be a moment. <laughs> and I can tell you that because uh, one of Michael's doctors, excuse me, gosh, carbonated beverages are not my friend. Uh, one of Michael's doctors uh, saw his socks. He was wearing a pair of socks that I knit for him out of some self-striping yarn that I dyed. And she was like, wow, those are really nice socks. Where did you get those? And he said, yeah, my wife knit those. So she came out to the waiting room to tell me that she loved the socks. I think I'm going to have to knit her a pair of socks for Christmas. I just thought of that. Why didn't I think of that sooner? Oh, I totally have to knit her a pair of socks now. Hey, that can be one of the 12 gift knit socks I do. Okay, anyway, so yeah, um, so this is another pattern that I'm working on. This is the first sock. Things are going really well. So uh, when I get to down to the toe, I'll just do a standard toe in the black. And so I'll have cuff, heel, and toe in the black. Uh, and yeah, so at some point in the future here, um, I may be calling for testers for this. So if you are interested, uh, just follow me on Instagram. Uh, follow D Hard House on Instagram and look for those posts where I ask for test knitters. All right. Uh, test knitters get a free copy of the pattern. Um, obviously, I asked something of you. I asked you to give up some time and energy to knit these and help me proofread the patterns. So, uh, but hopefully, it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm cranking out some sock patterns here and I think I'm getting the the groove of, of of putting out patterns that are pretty error free. So uh, so it should be be pretty smooth sailing. Anyway, that's me talking myself up with lots of confidence, and I hope it holds up. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I've got on the needles. I have a sweater. I have a pair of socks. Uh, I told you guys I forgot something downstairs, and it's because I'm purposefully leaving that project in the room with the treadmill because that is my treadmill knitting. So it's um, a pair of socks that I'm knitting as a gift to be part of the gift knit cal for the socks. Um, but I've got it in there. It's just going to be a plain um, stockinette stitch sock that I can knit while I'm walking on the treadmill. So I've been leaving it in that room so that it's there. So I can just hop on the treadmill and just go. So I forgot it, but I can tell you guys, I've, I've done three rows of ribbing, three. That did is it. So <laughs> it looks like nothing right now. So I will show that to you guys next time and it'll be more meaningful. Um, yeah, so. That is that. I have not done any spinning. Um, I will say I was not at all confident to use my, um, I need to comb more of the fiber. And I have a comb sitting right over here. I was not feeling at all comfortable to use this guy when my finger was hurting. So, <laughs> but it, like I said, it's, I can tell it's getting a lot better. So I think I might sit down and prep some fiber uh, so I can spin up some more yarn uh, 
because I have some goals for spinning this year and I should get working on that too. All the things. I just love it. So is that here I am looking around like, is that really it? This is a long episode because I had a lot of recap. The next time it should be pretty short. So like I said, uh, Wednesday evenings, I'm going to record this regular episode where I sit down in front of the camera and I talk to you and then I post it. Uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, maybe once a month on a Monday, maybe maybe twice a month, uh, doing some kind of live stream on Instagram. That way I can interact with you guys more. Uh, as fun as it is to pump out like a pre-recorded, no interruptions kind of episode, it's also really nice to connect with you folks. So yes, uh, follow me on Instagram, the Dhart House account to look for, uh, I'm going to ask you guys questions about days and times. I'm repeating myself just to recap. That's the teacher in me. <laughs> so, uh, so look for that. And until next time, happy crafting. I'm, it's 2020. The sun is going down. The snow is on the ground. Oh, you guys. Anyway. Happy crafting, and I'll see you next time. Take care. So I'm getting ready to sit down and record a podcast. I thought I'd show you guys the view from my craft room. So there's this huge pine tree. I mean, this thing is huge. And it's got to be some kind of cedar. I think it's a red cedar tree. Um, it's huge. It's so tall. <laughs> oh, look, I have some icicles outside the window. Okay. Um, but it provides really nice shelter from some of the wind, which is nice. So you can see um, there's snow over there uh, on that side of the house. And you can see snow on the... That's the roof for the porch area downstairs. Uh, but over here, there's not very much snow in the backyard. <laughs> Um, and then that's the neighbor's backyard, but, um, yeah, so we got a, maybe an inch of snow, maybe a little bit more than that. Some of it has melted in the sunlight today. Uh, but this is the view from my craft room, and, uh, I'm just so happy to see snow. So I thought I'd share that with you before I sit down to record.